all the coffee? Uh, all the coffee you can drink. No, it's cheap coffee. It's cheap coffee. It's like the defense check all the boxes in game one. Uh, we, we, we still got a long way to go. I mean, we're still developing that. There was, I'll, I'll say this about the performance. We played hard, which is uh, always the first step. Um, we played together. We stayed in the game. You know, I think sometimes it's easy when you get a, a lead to, to relax a little bit. I don't think our leaders were letting that happen. And so um, we checked all the boxes for week one, but uh, we're certainly uh, far from a finished product. Do you feel like you kind of showcased the depth that's available? Yeah, I mean, it was interesting, uh, you know, some of the guys not being able to play that, uh, you know, a guy like V.J. Payne gets a start and a guy like uh, Kendra Stagger plays a whole bunch and a guy like, uh, um, you know, Jake Clifton, you know, Jacob Harris, some of these young guys, it was awesome to get those guys as much playing time as we did. Do you have an update on Sean Robinson, uh, Josh Hayes? It's going to be a uh, game time, probably, uh, thought process with both of them. And T.J. Smith? Uh, I think TJ will be available uh, for us. Um, he's been practicing all week, so um, excited about uh, about having him back. How do you feel about the secondary performance as a whole on Saturday? Um, I thought, uh, you know, for the uh, for the older guys, I thought that, that have some experience. I thought they were they were sensational. I thought they did a great job. Um, you know, some of the younger guys, I, I think, you know, just getting used to that game speed was a was an adjustment and it and will be you know until uh, they get some more snaps under their belt but uh, uh, I thought they communicated well I thought we uh, uh, you know we, we did a nice job uh, for the most part again with the older guys tracking the football and, and tackling um, younger guys maybe uh, got a little work to do in that area yet but uh, uh, no I was, I was really happy with the performance overall you talked a little bit earlier about checking all the boxes you're looking for in week one, aside from improving tackling and tracking the ball, what kind of improvements you're looking for in week two? Well, this is gonna be a different animal this week. Um, you know, for starters, and this has been the biggest challenge with all these new guys, and I'm not just talking about freshmen, I'm talking about, you know, transfers and stuff that are coming in here. You know, we don't have um, eight days or whatever to prepare for this team, we've got three. And so, um, you know, getting those adjustments and getting those things um, in that amount of time is, is a challenge in and of itself. Um, you know, the speed is going to be different, I think, than what we saw last week. Um, different, different animals, uh, different, uh, different plays, that, you know, than what we saw last week in concepts and formations. And that's uh, just getting those adjustments, I think, is going to be the biggest thing. As a defensive coach, how do you prepare for a group of skillful, skill position players that might be faster, like you said there? We just take off running backwards as soon as that <laughs> ball is snapped. Um, the biggest challenge is, is just getting our guys to, to stay in their technique. You know, when you've got guys that can run and, and push up on your toes with some speed, you know, the natural tendency is going to be getting guys to, you know, start to play a little bit softer and easier. And that's that's uh, the uh, that's absolutely what we don't want to do. We want these guys to trust their technique. And, you know, we've seen speed before and and, uh, um, and we'll handle it. Uh, again, this is a new group of guys that, uh, um, you know, hadn't played a lot of snaps at this at this level. And so it'll be an adjustment period for those guys. And that's why I'm just trying to get those guys to trust what, they're, what they've been taught and, and, and play with technique. Missouri showed a lot of three wide receiver four receiver from empty. What kind of, I don't want to say pressure, but challenge does that present to you as well as some of those younger corners? Yeah, they got formations uh, for days. And, and, you know, I think they're going to they're gonna do a lot of those things to try to uh, create confusion with us and, and, and to try to create, uh, uh, in, in man situations, try to create some, some picks and some mismatches and you know they're also going to use formations to try to dictate uh, what we're going to be in you know they may get an unbalanced because they you know we're going to be in this versus unbalanced or whatever and um, you know it, it's just uh, communication I think is going to be the biggest thing and we've been doing a uh, putting a lot of emphasis on that and, and getting uh, getting better at that uh, across the board. 30 snaps for Cleve Duke are you kind of close to being able to cut him loose? I think so yeah he's getting he's getting more comfortable um, you know, he's no different than a new guy because he's playing a new spot, you know, and, and so um, played about what we thought and hoped that he would play and he looked fine doing it. Uh, we didn't get any extended long series though, really uh, defensively until that last one. So, you know, to, to say he's going to be out there for eight, nine in a row. I don't know that he's ready for that yet, maybe. Uh, but we got Des Purnell, some quality snaps, um, got some other guys, some quality snaps that we could uh, that we could throw in there and, and not skip a beat. Do you emphasize 
you know, think about where Luther Burton is often because obviously they want to get him the ball in a lot of different ways. Yeah, in, in, in one game, it's tough to say he's going to be here or there. Uh, I think they did a nice job of moving him around and being creative with that. Um, and, it, and it's hard to say, but you, you bet we're going to know where he's at. Speaking of that, with Cook the starter, he played some against Georgia last year. Bowl game in the opener. He's got enough on tape to really gauge what he's all yeah, about. Yeah, he's a good player. I, I, I the, You know, the thing that, that scares me about him is I think he throws the ball well, but I think the, the other scary thing is him extending plays with his legs. I think they're going to use him um, a little bit in the run game. Wouldn't surprise me if they were doing some read stuff with him. Um, and, you know, just because he can he can really run. He's, he looks like he's got tremendous speed on tape. Um, and then just his ability to keep plays going in the pocket. You know, if we're not, uh, if we're getting things covered down, his, his escape ability in the pocket. Again, when you're, when you're playing with uh, guys that have speed and guys that push things down the field and, uh, you know, you're going to match that up somehow in the secondary, and what, that's going to put a lot of heat on our front and, and on our linebackers to keep Brady Cook corralled, you know, if he does get out of there. It's felt like, um, as far as you guys were concerned, the first quarter and a half really was the main unit on, uh, on the defensive side, and then you started to rotate some more guys in with that first group. Is that kind of how you anticipate the season going, I this do. week going? Yeah, I, I, it, my philosophy has always been if you're ready to play, we're going to play you. And uh, I would, I would, I don't like having one guy play 65 snaps and another guy play five. If all things being equal, we'd like to keep things equal. Now, all things aren't always equal. You know, there's there's some times where there is a drop off between one guy and another, and that kind of balance might happen. But um, you know, as we get further, these roles change. You know, some guys might be overperforming what we thought they were doing early. Some guys might be underperforming, and so the snap count that you're seeing in game one uh, is a fluctuating thing. That kind of a very running attack and like nine different guys ran the ball in that in that first game what, what, what kind of goes into preparing and kind of predicting where well, they're going to run the football i mean that's that's their identity i think that's what they want to do and i think that sets up a lot of the gadgets and a lot of the the things that they do um off of that to, to get explosive plays i mean they're gonna um you know they're, they're they're it starts with their run game and i think they're really good at it uh, i think they come off the ball well on the old line i think they got some backs that can hit it um I think they've got good schemes, and so uh, you know it starts with with us stopping the run. What do you feel of Kobe Savage and his performance on Saturday? Kobe's like a bullet, man. I was just trying to get out of his way as he was uh, running towards me. Uh, he did he did a nice job. Um, you know he he uh, he did about what I expected him to do. I think he's he's going to be the type of guy that's always going to play hard. He's always going to be locked in. He's always going to play with a bunch of intensity, and uh, you know I think the more comfortable he gets. Now, um, you know, he's going to be better and better each week. The length of the spin, it looked like all of his hits were clean, but I can see a flash. It's always a concern, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the first one uh, it was right in front of me, and it was the most violent thing I'd ever seen. And uh, <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I looked up at the replay, and I, I, he clearly hit him, you know, in the target zone. We talk about that a lot, and um, we don't, we try not to make it even close. I mean, I don't, you know, they say, you know, Below the, the neck, and I, I don't even I don't even want him that high. I, I don't want it to be anywhere near it. And we talk all the time about seeing what you hit. And I think uh, we, we've got some guys that are you know that that sometimes get on the tattered edge of that. And so the more we can just see what we hit and get our target zone low, I think we're gonna be okay. Did Drake uh, Cheatham fit into that jack role? He did a nice job. You know, he didn't get as much action, didn't get tested as much. Um, you know, I, I think. Uh, uh, and he's just a super intelligent kid, and you know sometimes maybe overly so, think, thinking about stuff and, instead of just cutting it loose. But I thought uh, I thought the compliment of, of Drake with Sincer Mason was great last week. Coach Kleiman talked a little bit on Monday about how much they use stretch plays and counters. How important is it to set an edge with edge rushers and then also contain quarterback runs, like you said? Yeah, I mean that's um, just just keeping keeping gap integrity and keeping uh, um, you know keeping. Uh, being sound with our eyes and stuff in the run game and, and using our hands and keeping ourselves alive and staying off the ground, those are going to be, that's that's the key to the game. Got time for one more? Anyone? Nope. All right.